Okay, so my name is Vajra Shura. Uh, I'm based in Dublin, uh, where I work in the Buddha Center and uh, among other things. And um, I'm here with Sabadra Mati. Sabadra Mati, do you want to say hello? Yeah, so hi everybody. I'm um, Sabadra Mati and I'm at the LBC in uh, London, UK. Um, Great, and we're, we're here today to talk about the um, well, Kalyana Mitrata and Sangha, which is one of the guidelines, one of the eight guidelines in this new document that we've been discussing in the college and in our ordination training. Yeah, um, yeah so Spadramati, what, what, where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? Well, oh yeah, we didn't say we we're both in the college. Um, oh yeah. yeah you were yeah. both in the college. Um, and well, I want to ask Spadramati, so why do you think the Buddha said spiritual friendship is the whole of the spiritual life? Yeah. Um, th this has always been a, a, a kind of a, a really live question for me because by, by temperament I'm quite introverted you know and I'm, I'm happy to go off and do my own meditation nice. retreats and all that kind of thing but I have to say I, I the more I practice the more I think the Buddha was dead right I mean I've I've always thought he was right but the more I'm seeing that in my own experience and um, I think when I look back on my life it's my friendships that have kept me practicing and kept mm. me well and stopped me from going off into my own head or all my own kind of detours um and it's my friendships that have really transformed me perhaps more than any meditation retreat uh, i was just talking a few moments ago it's about dramatically about my when i became a private preceptor one of the things you do is you invite lots of your friends to give you feedback about how your practice is that's part of the process of becoming a private preceptor and my friends were really rejoicing but they also all pointed out tendencies in me that were not very helpful and I knew those tendencies already. They were the same tendencies I heard about in the ordination process years ago, you know, but I thought I'd hidden them from my friends yeah. and uh, I could kind of put up with them myself. But once I, my friends, I knew my friends could see them all. I would like, I have to do something about these. And it was, I think actually for the first time in my life, I really did something about those deeper tendencies, wow. you know, uh, because all my friends saw them and that's what it meant to me, you know. That was really good, isn't it? Um, it's funny you're saying you're an introvert. I'm an extrovert. And, um, well, and friendships also have been very important to me in my Dharma life and also created great difficulties in a way. Like my friends are the people I really like the most, but also the people who annoy me the most. Um, through For the last 30, 35 years, I've uh, lived in Buddhist communities, worked with other people who are practicing and it's got that double-edged thing it's very very supportive but also sometimes I just think God, I wish everybody would just go away and I could just like get on with things myself but that's why it's so good um because it means you really have to well look at yourself a bit like you're saying Vajra Shura and I love that image of uh, sort of gems tumbling you know you get all these rough stones and a tumbler all tumbling together and but then they all come out as a beautiful gems and I I really feel that um very acutely at times that I'm in that tumbler and mm -hmm. uh, bashing off against people um, having your rough edges knocked off having my rough edges knocked off yeah yeah yeah, yeah. which isn't oh, you know which isn't always easy but very, mm. but always um always rewarding mm. um and well, I was thinking about, which I say about more about my thoughts in general as well. I was thinking about, well, why have, you know, why did the Buddha say spiritual friendship was a whole of the spiritual life? Why has Bhante mm -hmm. emphasized friendship so much in Tri Ratma and our movement? And I was thinking, well, actually, the qualities of being a friend are enlightened qualities. Um, to be a friend, I think it's actually important to think in terms of being a friend rather than having friends um, and to be a friend means well you have to be generous you have to be loving um, you have to be faithful actually um, you've got all these qualities and probably many more I thought ah they are the qualities of an enlightened mind actually um, so if you're actively practicing that and it is a practice then you practice on the qualities of the enlightened mind i don't know what, what you think about why is why is Bhante so emphasized friendship um, yeah i mean it's, it's almost like the water we swim in isn't it in Chirapna? Yeah. And, and and i just think that well, well, just to give a very simple example, when I came along to learn to meditate back in 1999, I love meditation, 
but I almost love the person who taught meditation just as much. And that was just as attractive to me. I don't mean in any kind of sexual way. It's more like there was a person there. It was a man who was just very together, very warm, very friendly. And uh, even though meditation had a big effect on me, that had a big effect on me as well. So there's something about seeing it in other people um, that just, you know, it, it, you know, it just communicates the Dharma so much more than personal study or personal practice yeah. or something I, I don't know I need to see it in other people for uh, it to be really real or something like that yeah and yeah. even 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 I'm hesitant talking like that or talking earlier it's it's like it sounds a bit too utilitarian there there's also just yeah. the joy of friendship that happens yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. very hard to pin down or yeah. put in a book or explain afterwards you know it's the feeling of working on a team together on a retreat or just being on retreat together and working through stuff together or uh, I don't know, there's just a joy to friendship that I, I think that's where Bhante comes from as well. Bhante's always seems to emphasize the path of beauty and mm-hmm. and um, friendship, I think, is the path to the beautiful as well. What's most truly beautiful, you know? That's really beautiful, actually. And in a way, when you think about beauty, it's not utilitarian at all. You're concerned about that. It's really not. And mm. Actually, I'm very, I was very, very struck by you said you love the person who taught you meditation um very very moved by that actually and to me that it also brings in this other aspect of a friendship which is as well as having friends who well bandit calls a horizontal friendship just that aspect of looking up that ability to look up and and love the love your teacher and i think that's an enlightened quality as well as we know from the garava sutra of course um you know the buddha's instinct was to look up um so it's easy to forget that that's an aspect of friendship but that looking up in love even in reverence um and and also um at the same time there's looking out to other people that we can help maybe people who are a bit newer to the path than us um and again i was just saying when we were chatting earlier if i'm allowed to say this when i'm when I'm thinking about if somebody's ready for ordination or not, which, you know, we do as preceptors, mm. one of the things I'm always noticing is, ah, oh, they've started to look out. They've started to see themselves as a Kalyana Mishra, even if they've yeah. not got that label on them. Yeah. They're starting to look out for those newer people and lend them a hen- helping hand and see themselves as somebody who can do that, yeah. Yeah, you know, who has that agency and effectiveness. So. I think it's really good. And I think that's all covered on the guideline, isn't it? You've got this aspect of, you know, creating friendship with people that you're rubbing alongside with. This ability to look up to guides and teachers, especially Bante, of course, and then this ability to look out for others who are coming along. And and I think, I think like, um, for me one of the great things of the dharma was finding something to look up to again after mm. you know leaving behind the religion of my youth and uh, and then being a quite a militant atheist for a few years and then just finding something to look up to again and people to look up to was like you know an oasis in the desert in some ways you know and that and that that faculty just only seems to deepen the more mm. i practice and the longer i am in the order this ability to look up to my friends who i admire and to look out to other people to help them in whatever way i can and uh, and also, I guess the order is a network of friendships at the end of the day, isn't it? Um, mm. That's all it is in some ways. I mean, not to reduce yeah. the order, but that, that's yeah. the only kind of structure it has in some ways. You know, there are institutions to help with that, but really they're yeah. just there to help that flow of Kali and the Mitra to, um, the, only, the only other area, well, the other area I was thinking of is just, you know, part of being an order member as well is just being very concerned with anything that blocks that flow of friendship. Oh, you, know? Yeah. you know, so so for me, um another aspect of friendship is having people which who spark off Korean apotropia you know mm. and and um part of the part of what I would love to see in people who are ready for ordination is that they have they value those conditions and they have they're willing to put themselves into situations where they can have Korean apotropia sparked mm. off which are called you know the guardians of the spiritual life you know and are able to readily confess and be open with mm. their friends and have friends they can really confess to and I just think that's such a good sign for a person when they can do that you know yes and I, I, I like I think particularly apotropia it is yeah. it's quite subtle isn't it mm. um my true bander who's another mutual friend he's called our conscience externalized mm. um it's quite subtle to get that, isn't it? Because it can easily, I don't know, it can easily have connotations as somebody's going to 
be cross with you or tell you off, but it's really remember that mm. is our conscience externalized? And mm. I actually have experienced that more as a preceptor as well mm. as looking, looking, seeing it and witnessing it in other people. Mm. That as soon as I started ordaining people, it just, I, you know, I, I it sort of just raised the stakes for me very, very much indeed. I remember being in a meeting with somebody I'd just ordained and years then can be quite grumpy in meetings and immediately thinking, oh, I'd be so ashamed to be grumpy with someone I've just sat in the ordination kitty with. So it was very, very um, beneficial for me, actually. And I think that could be, I like the way you put it, always looking for situations where apotropia can flourish um it will guard us and um and that will mean we've got more positivity joy less suffering in our lives yeah maybe that's where spiritual friendship meets the path of responsibility you know that uh, when, when when one is a friend to people one has more responsibility to be true to your dharma practice in that kind of way which again is really good because i'm naturally lazier the unenlightened state is laziness, isn't it, in terms of practice? Yeah. So yeah. kind of spiritual friendship forces us to uh, practice more in a really good way, you know? Yeah, it does, yeah. actually. I yeah. found that's really, really worked for me. Left to my own devices, I don't know what would have become of me. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. taking responsibility in relation to other people, that's the thing. Of course, you don't take responsibility for them, yeah. but taking responsibility in relation. And in a way, that's what our institutions, like you said, they're just a means to help one to do that, yeah. Um, yeah. to help one to deepen friendship. I really liked that. Yeah. Was that a little glance at the clock there? I, saw. I, I, I can't remember how long we've been speaking, but uh, it's probably coming close to 10 minutes now. I so think is, it is, might be. Is, is there anything else on Sangha generally or anything you want to say, Spadamati? Or, you know, oh. I, I think I think we could underestimate the effect of just turning up as well and engaging with Sangha too um, you know, and things yeah. like that. You know, I think that's yeah. important to highlight as well. Yeah, yeah. And well, I, I, I've been thinking during, especially during lockdown, I've been thinking about fidelity as well, because mm -hmm. we've had to conduct our friendships often without being um, physically present with people mm -hmm. and had to bear them in mind. And I just and maybe, we're doing this here on Zoom now as well. And we're doing this here on Zoom. Yeah, we haven't seen each other personally for ages. Um, but you're very much on my mind, especially as you go off to lead this ordination retreat. Um, <laughs> and maybe we could end with a little recommendation of a Bante lecture. So Bante, lecture by Bante on fidelity. Um, very, very apt generally, but particularly in this time when even though things are opening up, we might not be able to see our friends and they're further flung. Um, just that quality of fidelity. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah. my good friend, Savadra Mati, thank you for the chat. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Savadra Shura. Yeah. yeah. I, I look forward to seeing you again in person at some point. And, yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. Good. Great. Great. And best of luck to everyone with their practice of spiritual friendship. Yeah. 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 All the best, everyone.